Her 20-year-old son was busted in a police sting that catches adults targeting underage children for sex. And while she supports police locking up dangerous child predators, she says police stings rarely do that and more often uses misleading decoys who take advantage of those who are caught to make splashy headlines in the news. Kathleen Hambrick calls vigilante groups who expose predators dangerous, and she believes the public needs to hear the other side of the story. The story of those caught in the stings, the stories you never see in media reports. Let's welcome Kathleen Hambrick to the show, Open Mic, right now. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. That's what you're going to hear on my podcast, Open Mic. I'm going to tell you things that most lawyers won't tell you. We expose the truth and bring you justice. I want you to go for the win in law and in life. Hi, Hi there. Hi. Thanks for well, having me. My <clears throat> pleasure. Welcome to Open Mic. Um, I know that you've watched some of our episodes and that you've seen us um, have Chris Hansen on the show and CC Unit and Ghost and the Anxiety Wars, uh, who's a local guy here at Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I, I appreciated your email and I appreciated your feedback. Thank you. And um, that's why we're having you on. So those people watching out there who like the show and have different points of view, please contact me because I wouldn't have gotten to meet Kathleen had she not emailed us. So Kathleen, tell us about your son and how he grew up a little different from most kids as far as social interaction and online gaming. Um, sure. I don't think that he necessarily grew up different. He's just an introvert and um, you don't, you don't hear about the introverts as much as you hear about the kids on the, you know, football team or the cheerleaders or the uh, band. And he didn't do any of those things. He uh, is very shy, uh, but, um, you know, he's a little quirky like me. And uh, he just, he's, he's just a different kind of person than, than you hear about normally. Um, but I think there's a lot of introverts and there are a lot of kids that get um, addicted to playing video games. This is not new. <laughs> so he grew up in that generation and, and that's what he was drawn to. Right. So at 20 years old, he was living at home, had a job. Tell us what happened to him online as far as uh, the sex sting by undercover police. So, uh, my son had done this before a number of times. I knew he had done it. I've done it. Sorry. <laughs> he went online and he was looking for a hookup. And uh, he went to a place that is for adults because he is an adult and he was looking for an adult. So uh, he went on to Craigslist Casual Encounters. Uh, you have to click that you're 18 or over when you go on to that site. And so in his mind, and now he's 20 and, you know, he doesn't get the red flags that some of us do. But to him, that meant that only adults were on that site. So he figured he was free to say and do whatever he wanted. And uh, he ended up seeing a ad for a woman looking for a man who labeled herself as a gamer girl. And my son was addicted to video games online. So instant draw, he started talking to her right away. Let me just clarify one point. You said that my son doesn't pick up on red flags. Uh, what did you mean by that? Well, uh, I think all young people don't pick up on, um, potentially if somebody says something, they don't necessarily know the connection, you know, like, um, just uh, if somebody says to toe the line, a lot of kids don't know what toe the line means, you know? And, and I think of my son at 20 as a kid, uh, he had been in the Navy already, uh, and had been, um, at the end of boot camp. they said w we wouldn't, they wouldn't take him because he has ADHD. So they literally, uh, you know, already pointed out to the fact that, and not that he wasn't intelligent, he scored extremely high on the test that you're supposed to go, you know, that you used to get in. 
Uh, in fact, he was almost to the part where he was going to be put into the nuclear program because he's very smart, but he doesn't catch details and he does it. And he was young. He's young and naive. And you just don't, the back of your hair doesn't go up for a young person as it does for an older person. They're also very impulsive and they don't necessarily believe things they're told. Got it. So all right, take me back to the uh, back to the Craigslist story. Um, he thought he was meeting or he was, you know, trying to hook up online. Right. Um, and, and what happened next? Right. So he starts talking to this girl and he's extremely happy. She wrote back, which, you know, rarely happens right away. So she wrote back right away. Tell me about yourself. You know, they had a little introduction. And then she said she's 13. And that was like within a couple of minutes, she said, I'm 13. And what did your son do? So my son's uh, answer was, you mean you're 23? Was that a typo? Because this is at a site for adults. That's what he wrote back. And she didn't answer him, which is, you know, you would think if you're trying to make sure that you're catching the right kind of people, you would want to be sure that that person understood right from the get go that you are, in fact, a minor. And she did not do that. Her answer was she likes college guys. I don't know if that's supposed to mean you're 13 or not. OK, so so he didn't I mean. I'm a little confused. He didn't believe her or he thought he was just misreading something here. And he continued the conversation after she said she was six thirteen. So what happened there was, um, you know, he did say, he did say, um, why would you be on here if you were 13? He didn't believe her. So the next thing he did was ask her for a picture because she had said that he said, okay, let me see who you are. And he thought in that regard that he would see if she really was 13 or not. And if she was, he would just, stop talking. So he got a picture. The picture and? was of a 24 year old woman. <laughs> and so, you, you've seen that. Have you seen this picture? Uh, this picture was actually printed in the New York times. Do you have it handy that you could hand, hold it up for me? Uh, I don't. I'm right. sorry. I I'm could. sure my, my crack staff, Rocky will put that up there. That's right. Uh, in here. So, so, um, okay. So continue. Yeah. What happened next? So, uh, you know, and, Additionally, being young, he he couldn't tell me when I first asked him, he couldn't tell me what was it about the picture that made you know it was an adult. But when I looked at it, there's subtleties that that you can tell as an adult. I could tell which, uh, you know, you, you make a splash decision when you see something. But a picture is worth a thousand words. And honestly, we've passed it around and nobody says that that person is a minor at all. So so he assumes this person is just, you know, uh, role playing or in a fantasy or whatever. He doesn't really care at that point. He's seen an adult. So they continue to talk for another hour and a half back and forth. And uh, some of it gets a little sexual. And uh, at an hour and a half later, they, uh, they decide to meet. And uh, she again says at that point, I'm 13. You sure you're okay with this? At this point, he's been talking to her for an hour and a half. He's seen her picture. They're on an adult dating site. He's thinking, you know, clearly you are pretending to be a little girl. That's fine with me. It's not my fantasy. It's your fantasy, <laughs> but okay. So, and he also thinks to himself as a 20 year old, you can't trust anything on the internet. Let me go there, find out if you are a kid, I'll leave. And if you're not, woohoo. So. Okay. So just make sure I'm getting the story right. She, sure. so they, they, so they, he meet an hour and a half later, where do they meet? What kind of place do they meet? He sends her an address. Um, and he drives to it's a residence and she is down in the basement of the residence set up. Um, and so you have to walk around to the back of the house and there's a light on and my son texts her as a last ditch effort to make sure it was an adult says, would you come outside first? Cause yeah, you know, I want to, I wanted to see you. He says to make sure I'm at the right place, but he wanted to see before he walked into a house with a potential child, not that he believed it, but he's just being cautious. And the woman from the picture walks out the door, says, Hey, I'm over here. He sees her and he goes into the house with the adult. The only person who's supposed to be there is that one person. So he walks in and he gets arrested. So I'm looking at the picture now 
as I said, my, my team sent it to me. Good. Uh, she's got headset on a white hat. Um, Rocky will, uh, put this picture up so our viewers can see it up. Oh, there it is. Sure. Wow. Uh, good job guys. Um, so she, I mean, listen, I have three daughters. I have a 13 year old, 18 year old, 21 year old. Um, does she look I, like your 13 year old? One of my team members says she looks 20. Uh, I could argue that she could be 16, 17. Um, but you know, she doesn't look 13. How old is this person actually? At the time of the arrest, when she walked out, she was 26. The picture was taken when she was 24. For me, okay. an adult, I see lines on her forehead, confidence in her eyes, and perfect makeup. That's not 13 to me. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't think she looks 13. So they... So the police uh, obviously had her online as a sting operation saying she was 13. Your son did what he did, met right. her. He walks into this house and they immediately arrest him. Oh, yes. Immediately. And hands down. And so the other weird thing about this, if I can, is that the police rules say they can use a picture of a police person when they are a minor because they can allow that. So the police person could have submitted a picture of when she was 13 and they could have sent that but they're send, purposely sending a picture of an adult. Why would you do that? Anybody that's looking for a, an actual child would not have gone to meet that person. And did your son try explaining to this to the police when they arrested him? Uh, yeah. He consistently through the interview that they had for him said, I, di I didn't think she was a kid. And if it was a kid, I would have turned and ran away. And did the, the police check his criminal history and, and, and records for child porn or for, you know, other illicit stuff. That's the other thing about the whole, I call it a scam. Personally, I think it, the whole sting thing is a scam for money. Um, they checked his phone. They checked my car because he had driven my car. They never came to the house. So if they're looking for victims, how do they know we don't, he doesn't have somebody locked up in the basement? How do they know that? They didn't come check his PC at home. They didn't check any of his stuff. They only took him. And yeah, of course they checked his history online, but I mean, his, um, his medical criminal history. Sorry about that. They checked his criminal history and he doesn't have any. So the fact that you don't have any and you don't have any pictures on your phone or any indicator that this was intentional, you would think that they would then do a more thorough investigation. Did we get the right guy? Is this really true? But they don't. They literally prosecute everybody that comes there everybody. And quite often, a lot of people who don't go there, they'll go to their house if they don't show up and arrest them there. So tell me what happened in the legal system. Uh, actually, you know, I honestly, and Jace also didn't believe it would ever be convicted. I kept asking my lawyer, why are we going to trial? What is there to prove? He didn't, in my mind, he didn't do anything wrong. And still to this day, in my mind, he didn't do it. He's naive. He's young. I would have gone, oh, I don't even want to go near that. But so we went to trial. We did a bench trial. We did not want to do a bench trial, but our lawyer told us that juries don't like to hear about this stuff. And so we didn't agree to it, but we did a bench trial, which is just the judge. And the judge. Well, you did agree to it. Because you could have pushed for a jury trial. So let's just be straight. Okay. <clears throat> I will be 100% straight. We didn't agree to it. And that's why Jace won his appeal. Because his lawyer signed the paper. But. That's, a, that's an important fact that you didn't say earlier. So you said we don't want a bench trial. Uh, you had a bench trial kicking and screaming, it sounds like. And he was convicted in a bench trial. Correct. And then you appealed that on the grounds that you didn't want a bench trial? Uh, our appeal lawyer said, did you ever actually sign this or say that you agreed to a, a bench trial? And Jace had not. And so that appeal, was the verdict was overturned. And then what happened? Um, well, Jace had already served a year and a half in jail and prison. And our lives were pretty much turned upside down in an instant. And it was a horrific time. Uh, so now... We're back to, they have recharged him and he has to go back to trial. That's where we're at right now? Right now. Wow. Yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> so, so does your lawyer know you're publicly talking about this stuff? 
I don't know. The lawyer really doesn't talk to us very much. It's, we've got, I don't have any money left. <laughs> hundred grand later. I mean, I don't have any money left. So uh, we were with a public defender. And honestly, I, I don't care if they know that we're talking about it. Uh, I think that that's part of how they get all this to happen and people to take an insane number of plea deals on these things happen. And I think that that's how they get it. They scare you, but I'm not scared. I you should be, but I'm not. Right. <laughs> So, so what, when did, when was his trial? I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't have a, a time frame of when this all happened. Sure. Uh, he was arrested in February of 2017. His trial was in May of 2018. He got out of prison, uh, 2020, January of 2020. And so he's been home for a year now. And the, the prosecutors are still going after him. Yeah. What was his original sentence? He got 18 months, lifetime probation, lifetime registration. And but, he was the lowest. I mean, people get 10 years for the same thing. But he was he was already released. So, I mean, he already served his 18 months, it sounds. Yep. So I'm confused why they want to retry him. They don't want to let it go. They get money for prosecuting him and getting convictions. And they're not going to let it go. So, oh my God. All right. So you, you recently told the story on the Dr. Phil show. Tell me, I, I have not seen that episode. Tell me about your experience on that show. Um, so we have a, uh, we have a group of advocates now that it's mostly parents that got together. And one of the parents had been writing Dr. Phil for like two years, um, sending her information. And by her, I mean, one of their producers. And uh, eventually after the New York times article came out, um, the lady said, well, you know, Araceli, my friend said, yeah, I know these people and this is part of what I've been telling you. And so the lady said, okay, well, if you can get her and her son on, then let's have a show. So we got on there and the producers were great. They were floored by what I was telling them. They, you know, told me how they went and had conversations with their children or their friends and nobody could believe that this was actually happening. Um, but when I, and they also tell they told me that there was going to be a police officer from one of the ICAC, Internet Crimes Against Children, uh, branches. Uh, he was a California officer out of Fresno. And so I said, great, can I ask him questions? Because I really want to know why they're doing this. Why, why would you do it this way? Why would you confuse people and then arrest them as if you thought they always had the intention of hurting a child? And uh, they said, yeah, you're going to be able to ask him questions and, you know, have a conversation. So I said, great. I had all of my questions lined up and we got on the show and I, I was not allowed to ask him a question. So I was like, OK, what is this about? And eventually I interrupted Dr. Phil and I said, can I ask a question? <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah, sure. So my question was specifically what we had talked about, if you're truly trying to save children, why would you not go to the person's house to check for any evidence of this having happened before any other victims, any, you know, somebody in, in, in need of help. And he, he looked at Dr. Phil and said, we do. And Dr. Phil said, oh yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of laws you have to follow and rules you have to follow. And the cop was like, yeah, we do. No, <laughs> they didn't. And I, in your case, so, they did not. Uh, so since then, I've actually started a survey and I've sent it to, I mean, there are tens of thousands of people caught in these things and I've sent it out and it's like one out of 10, they go and check the houses. They don't. I know they don't. So okay. but, but that's, so that's uh, your beef about that is that there could be people tied up in the basement. My beef about that is that they're lying about why they're doing it. Doing what? The stings? Yes. And, and your, your, your hypothesis is what? I happen to know for a fact that they get money from the federal government for every arrest and prosecution that they do. And it doesn't matter whether it's true or not. They still get funding and they get millions of dollars. Okay. So there's an incentive for them to do this. The additionally, they have a backlog of rape kits. Washington state was behind by 3000 rape kits unprocessed, but they're doing stings. So okay. that doesn't so, make sense to me. So, 
Okay. So the, I, I get priorities and money. Um, with, with regards to your son's, uh, um, case, if yeah. the, if the photograph would have been of, of this police officer at 13, right. Would you feel differently? Oh yes, absolutely. Okay. When I first heard that this had happened, I raced home and searched his computers looking for anything that would indicate that he had been looking at children or, and, and I want to say out loud, because this is a, a misnomer, I think, just because somebody is into child porn doesn't mean they're going to offend. But those that offend children all have child porn at home or on their phone or whatever. So I went home and instantly looked through all of his stuff and there was nothing. So I, 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 not to mention, I know my son, but I didn't want to be one of those parents who denied it for no reason. I said, okay, show me why you think this. And it wasn't there. There was no corroborating evidence. There's no investigation. So let's, uh, this, this is going to be a sloppy, sloppy question, but so you contacted me because we've had Chris Hansen, ghost and uh anxiety wars zach swears on the show um and and you were upset uh you're upset at vigilantes for lack of a better word they don't call themselves vigilantes but let's just use that word for today sure these this there's a huge difference in the law between a private person doing this stuff and the police um obviously in your case the police did it but you know, some of these stories that we've shared on the show through these other episodes of these vigilantes who appear to be doing it for the right reason in their minds, who appear to be catching uh, bad people uh, who are uh, think who think they're meeting 12, 13, 14 year old children in targets and Walmarts and, and whatnot uh, for sexual rendezvous. Um, they think they're doing the right thing. They have a lot of support, but the difference between the two is, is very, um, drastic. So tell me, um, you know, what you think is so wrong with these, uh, private vigilantes. Well, there's a lot of things wrong with the private vigilantes. Um, First off, in this country, you're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. So you are accusing somebody and you are not showing any of the evidence, not to mention we're not judges or juries and, and people can't just say, you did this and I think that you really meant X. And, and all of these crimes through stings, be it a vigilante or the police, are thought crimes. There, there are no children involved in these. So nobody has actually done what they're being accused of doing. So uh, additionally, there are a lot of laws about what you can and can't do. Like you cannot go on a site and impersonate somebody else. That's illegal. So the vigilantes are breaking the law. You cannot entrap somebody's words or confiscate their words when you're pretending to be somebody else. Words are guarded. You, uh, the only way was if you were within hearing distance of an actual person to person conversation. So there are a lot, a lot of laws that have to do with what they're doing. It, even the police aren't allowed to trap words uh, and they're given leeway because they're police to trap other people's conversations. You're not allowed to do that. It's, it's along the lines of wiretapping and it's just, it's, it's so these people are, their lives are being ruined by these vigilantes and where's the proof? Where's the, well, don't they, sh the don't they show the proof when uh, in the videos? Uh, no. Uh, the, uh, well, they show the chat logs. Uh, we've seen the chat logs. Uh, these people are, I mean, they, in my opinion, they're showing whether they gather the evidence right or wrong. They're showing uh, the, the chat logs and the conversations of these usually older men trying to pick up younger boys and girls. And, um, you know, and they show up at the meeting spot, clearly knowing they're 12, 13, 14 years old, they meet an aisle four at the target store. And there they are with their cameras, uh, showing these scumbags meeting them. You're advocating for these people saying that their rights are being trampled without evidence. Right. right. But I don't know if I agree with you. Uh, and that's fine. So what, 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 how this started was I had just seen one of 
ghosts videos. And I wrote him and I said, can I see your, your evidence? Can I see the chat log, which he did not provide to me? And even if he had, that would have helped. But even if he had, how do I know that he's not altering the chat log? How do I know? So when we were on Dr. Phil, he put up some messages that went between Jace and this person, but he didn't, he took them out of context. He didn't put them in order. <laughs> so, I mean, he twisted it to tell a story and the story was not what actually had happened. So how do I trust a single person that's out there who I don't know, who's doing this against people that he doesn't know? How, how do you, how does that work in the American justice system? Well, I mean, you don't, you're not, you know that this is happening out there. I do know that it's happening. I also and know the, that a lot of people are being tricked into something they did not intend. Like your son. Like my son. And I mean, so I assume you're going to be pushing for a jury trial this time. <laughs> yes, we will have it, a jury trial. What state is this being, is happening in New York? Washington state. What? I'm sorry. I don't know where I got New York, Washington right. state. Um, and, and, and is there a, is there a trial date set? It keeps getting moved. I don't know in this day of COVID and all that, we don't know what's going to happen. That's a good point. We're suffering the same here in Michigan. Um, and has there been any plea offers? Are they trying to resolve this case? They did offer a plea. Uh, they offered for one year of probation and then um, no jail time, no more jail time, I should say, or prison time, and one more year of probation, and then um, still on the registry for life, which, you know, I, I don't know if you, you probably do, you're a lawyer, how devastating that is to be on this registry of a million people now, a million people are disenfranchised from from life in this country. <laughs> so you can't get a job. You can't get an apartment. You have to, you know, explain everywhere you go and everything you do. So uh, that is what they offered him. Part of the problem here is that um, in order to get my son out of prison, we had to do the compact because we actually live in Oregon and not Washington, which was another interesting thing. When the police put this ad online in Craigslist, they put it not in their own state. They put it in the adjoining state. We won't even go into those technicalities, but <laughs> yeah, well, I definitely agree with you. The police, you know, there is entrapment. There are things that the police they're held to a way higher standard. In fact, there's no standard for, the uh, ghosts of the world and uh, right. others, but you know what? What have you ever watched the Chris Hansen uh, Catch a Predator shows back in the day? Yeah, and what do you see wrong with those? Kind of the same thing. I mean, you can't just ruin somebody's life off of what you believe. It's a TV show. It's a TV show. It's fantasy, and you know maybe those people were guilty or maybe they weren't, but. That was made for sensationalism. And I think these people who are vigilantes, it's almost like a video game for them. I don't, they get adrenaline off of it. They're junkies in that regard. That's so, not, that's not the American way. So I understand, you know, your son's case. I hear your position on it. I think that people could differ because your son went to the mm -hmm. home, even though she said she was 13 and a right? jury's have to grapple with that. But I think that, um, you know, I think I've seen the Chris Hansen shows and, and I don't think they're uh, misleading when it comes to uh, the chat logs. I think these people are, I believe, and I think a lot of people believe that these people are showing up for a sexual encounter with a minor and they are busted. And a lot of them admit it on the show. And when Chris says, take a seat and they spill their beans, you still think that that's catching people who, shouldn't be caught. No, I wouldn't say that. Absolutely. Some people who are caught are pre predators. And I mean, I was molested when I was a child by a stranger, which is really rare, but statistics show that that's not the norm. I mean, we're talking about 3%. Where's all, where's all the information or help about the families? Because it's the families 
who are the 97 percent. They're not even taught in school how to, you know, help themselves or watch out for themselves. Why so much information and, you know, positioning and looking at the 3 percent? Why is that such a big deal in this country? And I think it's because of the adrenaline and the scare factor and the, ooh, showmanship. But, I mean, there's a million shows out. There's the new one, Big Sky. That's about a abduction uh, for sex trafficking. So, but that's 3%. Why are people not looking at the 97%, which is Uncle Bob? They're not looking at Uncle Bob. They're not talking about Uncle Bob. Why? So- so what what is your um, what is your message to the ghosts of the world and Zach Swears of Anxiety Wars and Chris Hansen? What what is your message to them? My message to them is if you seriously want to catch these people, then you need to be working towards that as your career goal. You need to have the psychology background, you need to have the law enforcement background, and you need to be doing it in the right way and for the right reasons, not trampling on people's uh, civil rights. That's wrong. Not ruining people's lives because you think you've caught them. That's wrong. It's definitely wrong. Um, do you think all sex uh, stings by the police should be stopped? I think that they need to follow their own rules, which they are not doing. I think if they followed their own rules, they wouldn't be catching people like Jace and Araceli's son. There's a, nine out of 10, in my opinion, and a lot of people's opinions, nine out of 10 are the innocent guys who got confused or who didn't belong there. One is that predator. Great. Keep the predator. But if they don't have any corroborating evidence to this was their intent, let them go. Give them education. Give them probation. Why are you putting people in prison over a non-crime? Okay. Interesting point of view. I appreciate you sharing your point of view. Um, Thank you for I, having I, me. It's my pleasure. Uh, thanks for reaching out to me and to our show open mic and uh, best of luck to you and your son. Thank you so much. There you have it. Different point of view from what we've had on the show in the past with Chris Hansen and Zach Swears and Ghost from the CC unit. I'll be curious what they have to say about this. I'm curious what you have to say about this. Please leave us a comment one way or the other. Which side are you on? Are you on the vigilante side and the police side? Or are you on innocent people getting caught in the sting side? Um, and why? So look forward to you know, reading your comments and hearing from you. And thank you for watching open mic. Please like comment and share the episode. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time.